It's great to be here today. Um, I'm Pardis, um, and today I'll talk about uh, uh, how businesses exchange data together. Um, and this is a topic I've been focused on for a while now. Um, before we get started, I wanted to say uh, happy baseball opening day. Um, business partners exchange data for a variety of reasons. Um, for example, uh, kind of uh, SaaS vendors um, kind of manage uh, data, uh, offer some sort of service to their customer's customer. And so that uh, data ends up in their warehouse uh, that they need to get back to their customers. Um, Further, uh, when companies want to do market research, they might want to kind of purchase some data. They need to explore that data beforehand before it gets transferred either one time or on a recurring basis. Um, if you're in the transport, health, energy sectors, uh, you'll need to report data and metrics uh, to local government uh, for M&A deals. Um, the acquirer sometimes wants to um, run their own diligence on some data sets uh, before actually, you know, when the deal goes through, there will be a full transfer of data assets. Um, a lot of companies want to collaborate on data together. Uh, for example, kind of a uh, supplier might want to work with all their retailers uh, to come up with a uh, marketing strategy uh, without needing to transfer data uh, as well. Um, but enough about uh, kind of some of the uh, me some of the reasons. Uh, we want to talk about some of the methods that companies use to transfer data. Um, one of the very common ways that companies do this is by setting up an SFTP server. Um, then they use maybe AWS workflows, um, kind of uh, airflow or cron jobs to automate moving their data from, for example, S3 uh, into CSV files that they upload to SFTP. Um, the thing with this approach is uh, everything that happens on the other side uh, with the other business partner is really up to them. It's uh, to build that pipeline and manage moving data out of S3 and uploading it to their warehouse. Um, Sometimes what companies uh, end up doing is actually sharing their database or AWS credentials because they want the other company to kind of manage the end-to-end -end pipeline, be able to monitor it, and uh, kind of uh, ensure end-to-end um, -end encryption and so on. Um, however, you might say that that's not very secure, and that's true, but it's something that companies um, do sometimes. Um, although, uh, you know, you could, uh, with AWS, create IAM roles uh, to securely share access to uh, read and write access to S3 uh, for this purpose. Um, another approach is to uh, expose uh, an API as a SaaS vendor when you know exactly what data your customers will want. It m makes sense for you to spend time designing an API, expose it. Um, and there's a lot of benefits with uh, API uh, data sharing, API-based data sharing, because uh, consumers can choose uh, what data they want, uh, their standards uh, that everyone knows about. It's DB independent. You get implicitly a contract, so no uh, you know, additional sharing of schemas or things like that. And it's something that's very easily testable by both sides. Uh, and so that kind of makes it reliable. Um, you can also uh, pull data by implementing an API. Of course, this work is relatively time consuming and APIs change and maintaining those implementations are also uh, some work. And so uh, there are a lot of ELT vendors uh, kind of to help you uh, pull that data. Um, you can send data by implementing an SDK um, and send event data. For example, uh, Braze provides an SDK for you to send data. Um, and what they do is they calculate metrics based on uh, the data coming in. Um, these integrations sometimes take very long um, and, and it's a lot of work, uh, but it's very reliable data. Um, 
You could securely share data using uh, some of the tools that I've listed there. Um, it has a lot of benefits when you just want to share read-only access to data. Uh, it's instant, uh, real-time access because there's no data movement. It's a view of the data. Um, because data never leaves your servers, it's, uh, you get kind of uh, usage metrics uh, for auditing, um, and you can uh, restrict and revoke access at any time as well. Um, here you see kind of uh, how AWS uh, Redshift data sharing uh, kind of works uh, to share data both internally within an organization uh, and also externally with other orgs. Um, that's a painting uh, called Marketplace at Bruges uh, by Samuel Prout. Um, you can make data available via Marketplace. Again, there are some good tools uh, from uh, major cloud so service providers, uh, also from Snowflake, where you can uh, kind of provide that service. And, uh, and um, let's say in AWS Data Exchange, um, AWS customers get access to data from many data vendors um, through either Redshift Data Share or data can be moved onto their S3 bucket. Um, you can uh, send data uh, via an API um, to kind of some operational systems like MailChimp or NetSuite. Um, and um, again, this is, you know, uh, takes some work. And so uh, there are tools called reverse ETL tools or da data activation tools that can help you here. Um, and, you know, initially we talked about kind of uh, two companies wanting to collaborate on data in cases where they're not necessarily wanting to share row level access, user level access to data, in cases where they don't even know what the overlap of, it, of their data sets is. This is a very helpful approach and you have kind of a lot of major cloud service providers providing these data clean rooms. Um, also from Snowflake, Infosum, LiveRamp, all have a flavor of this. Uh, which is uh, a really good uh, method for a lot of companies. Um, <clears throat> having said all of that uh, and going through all of those methods, intercompany data exchange still remains challenging, and we'll go through some of that. You know, if you exchange data by extracting CSV, uploading to SFTP, you're losing a lot of type information that needs to be inferred once you're ready to move data back into the warehouse. Um, Data val validation is manual uh, in almost all cases. Um, and you'll see as you talk to data practitioners that um, a lot of people have been receiving PHI, PII data that uh, they might not have contracts for and they don't know what to, you know, uh, what to do with. So uh, data validation is definitely one of the challenges. Um, you know, Exposing an API is very time consuming, managing it, ensuring that it's backwards compatible and all of that. Uh, and so you can't expect every business partner to have an API for every data set that you need. Um, uh, at the same time, not all APIs are implemented by major uh, integra integration companies. Just because, uh, and so, you know, implementing it is very time consuming and it's why those integration companies exist in the first place. Um, some data consumers are not staffed. And, you know, we already kind of uh, talked about this where in, in the example of the SFTP approach, you're kind of expecting your uh, business partner to, to do the um, second half of the pipeline. And it's not always the case that they uh, are able to do that. Um, data consumers sometimes ask for obscure formats. Uh, it's a lot of work to get data in that right format and build and manage those pipelines. Um, really important thing here, also pricing is not always obvious. Who's paying for egress costs? Who's paying for the compute that's incurred in the transformation and so on? And even when you share kind of um, credentials that even sometimes makes it more complicated to do cost accounting. Um, speed is a challenge because there's so many diverse types of pipelines. People, it's hard to say for a lot of um, data providers uh, how long that's going to take or provide SLAs in the contracts. Um, 
security we spoke about is a challenge, um, you know, in the SFDP case where you're not really sure how data is going to end up in the in its destination. Uh, with credential sharing, of course, it's it's a problem, and also um, uh, with um, kind of. Uh, even APIs expose backend data. They are a source of data breaches. Um, as we talked about, there's so many different types of pipelines to manage with. And as a company is growing, uh, they have a lot of business partners. And with all of those, they have all of these very different types of pipelines that they need to maintain. In that same uh, way, auditing uh, what data they sent to which partner is a lot of work to figure out. Um, and ultimately, you know, when you start working with a business partner, there's too many uh, kind of things that you need to consider. How many people on your team can work on it? What? How many people do they have to kind of manage the rest of the pipeline? Um, what is uh, kind of uh, your infra, their infra? Um, what is the volume of data that needs to be sent? What is the speed and security guarantees that you need? Um, what is the cadence? What's the source and destination? And so on. And so there's a lot to consider um, in this process. So ultimately, um, what are the properties of a solution in this scenario? And what things should we look for? Uh, in uh, a solution for companies uh, that want to exchange data with their business partners. Um, ultimately, we really want something that handles the end-to-end cross-company transfer. Uh, we don't want to have any sort of expectation of how much time our business partner has in kind of managing this transfer. Um, and uh, we don't have to expect that they are uh, experienced in transfer. Um, we want something that to be cloud and tech agnostic because we don't want, when we're signing a contract with a business partner, we don't want to have to consider their tech stack uh, in our contracts. Uh, we want something that's easy to test and monitor, ensure we're sending the right data, we're receiving what we asked for. Um, we want uh, something, you know, contracts change all the time. We want something that we can really quickly change um, and evolve. And we want to be able to know exactly what we sent to every business partner, so a ledger of all transactions, uh, and so something where we can stay secure and compliant all the time. Um, yeah. So um, thank you so much for coming to this talk. Um, I um, am, uh, you know, we can talk later as well here in Austin or uh, on the various apps. Uh, please follow general folders for updates. And I'm DJ Pardis on the various platforms. Thank you.